Welcome to Fight News Now Extra. I'm John Pollock, and what a weekend of fights and fight-related news to dissect with John Randine and Robin Black. We have a full autopsy report on the Bellator Dynamite card from San Jose, whether the MMA kickboxing hybrid experiment worked, Fyodor Emelianenko's destination was revealed, and lots more to chat about on today's episode. Saturday night's Bellator Dynamite card saw Liam McGeary successfully defend his light heavyweight title for the first time, setting up for an armbar off of his back and then transitioning to an inverted triangle and submitting Tito Ortiz with seconds remaining in the opening round. Ortiz was able to score with the takedown and was winning the round until being caught with the submission. Ortiz made no excuses, stating it was the healthiest he had felt since 2006 and that McGeary was the better fighter on Saturday night. The biggest news to come out of Bellator's Dynamite event was that Spike TV will be the U.S. broadcast partner for Nobuyuki Sakakibara's new Japanese mixed martial arts organization, which will launch with a show from Japan on New Year's Eve and feature Fedor Emelianenko in the main event of the first show. It will not be a Bellator card, but it is expected to feature Bellator fighters on the show. The announcement of Emelianenko's signing was made with the last emperor coming out to the cage in San Jose, surprising some who felt Emelianenko was bound for the UFC for his return. And World Series of Fighting presented their 23rd event this past Friday from Phoenix, Arizona and was headlined by a rematch of the Fight of the Year candidate between lightweight champion Justin Gaethje and Luis Palomino. The two picked up where they left off this past March with a furious pace set in the first round with both having their moments while standing and trading. In the second, it was Palomino who appeared to tire and led to a devastating counter right hand by Gaethje which sent Palomino to the mat and was finished with strikes at the 4 minute and 40 second mark of the fight. This Saturday night, we are live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time with a one-hour live pre-fight show as John Ramsey and Robin Black and myself will be counting down to the UFC's return to Japan featuring Josh Barnett and Roy Nelson in the main event. Prelims from the Saitama Super Arena will be airing live here on Fight Network at 8 Eastern with four fights coming your way. Here with John Ramdean and Robin Black, tons of mixed martial arts to dissect coming out of this past weekend. We're going to talk about Bellator Dynamite, but let's start with Friday's World Series of Fighting awesome. card. I thought it was one of the better World Series of fight, Fighting cards that they presented in some time. Justin Gaethje and Luis Palomino, sometimes you just find two guys that their styles click and 10 out of 10 times they're going to produce an action-packed fight. That was the case certainly for the second time on Friday night. And Justin Gaethje, I don't know how long this guy is going to be able to fight with this style. It's incredibly entertaining though and Luis Palomino, a tough guy, but just I, I thought it was another great main event which sometimes isn't always the case when you're trying to build upon a fight of the year candidate. It's just like the Eddie Alvarez, Michael Chandler fights that just keep going. The styles match up perfectly and you mention it. You know, as much as I love watching the style of Justin Gaethje, it's a very risky style and I don't know how long he's going to be around in mixed martial arts if he continues to take the type of damage and punishment. Even when he covers up, Luis Palomino hits ridiculously hard. Mm. And if it was anybody besides uh, Justin Gaethje taking those punches, it would be Lu Luis Palomino be the champion. Chances are he would have been the champion the first time, but Justin Gaethje, Gaethje can take it. Uh, what about Dave Branch becoming the two-division champion after winning the light heavyweight championship? Really a, a solid show. Brian Foster. Brian Foster. And that's, that's the fight. You know, when I look at that, what, what are the challenges for Justin Gaethje? Well, if he fights like that against Brian Foster, I have a feeling Brian Foster is going to beat him. Can Justin Gaethje beat Brian Foster? Sure he can, but not when you take the damage that he takes. Yeah, this is... I hate being, like, the downer guy, <laughs> but you can't fight like that. We want that. We're, our culture is saying, give us more of that. You're being rewarded with a lot of money for that. They give out of the nights for that, but that's not how our brains are built to fight. And uh, you admire it. You do. Gaethje, you admire not only that he has the heart and desire to do that, that he's willing to do that, that he likes to do that, you admire that, but it is scary, man, it, it is. And for him to go out after and he'll say, I never remember these fights. I know we think that's because he got hit in the head a lot, but it isn't even really that. He teaches himself, again, you admire it, he teaches himself how to go into a berserker approach and it's making him a lot of money and I congratulate him on it and I'm all for him doing that with the information that he has. But man, getting hit in the head a lot is really rough and when we watch it, we cheer for it and we love it, we have to remember we're watching a guy who's willing to hurt himself for entertainment. 
Uh, Sorry to be a downer. Well, we, we leapfrog over to, to Saturday night's uh, Bellator MMA Dynamite card, their first of their, their Dynamite series, which are going to be their major event of the year. Uh, combining it with, with the kickboxing fights, what did you think of how that came across on what was about a four-hour broadcast on Spike? Did it work having both together? I did think that it worked, but what's funny about it is, you know, I think going in, it's like, okay, well, you see Phil Davis and Emmanuel Newton. There's going to be a lot of decisions on this card, so is this going to be designed uh, are the casual fans going to be entertained by the mixed martial arts? Maybe not because there's a lot of wrestlers involved. So hopefully the kickboxers will save the day and knock everybody's heads off. It worked the other way. It was a sensational night of finishes for the Bellator organization, not so much for the glory fights. You just made the perfect case for making the best matchup you can because they did look at that and go, geez, Melendez, she's tough. Let's get her an almost debuting like... 65-year-old fighter. I think she was in her 30s, <laughs> but she was older. And she'd probably knock her out. And then Paul Daly, this guy knocked Let's get him a one-and-two kickboxer. They don't work out that way. They made for exciting fights. I particularly was impressed by how he stood up to Paul Daly and really yeah, pushed yeah. him back. But you can't create knockouts. So just make the best matchup you can. And you also can't predict, oh, well, Phil's going to just control King Mo. That was, those were great fights. Congratulations, Phil Davis, yeah, man. Awesome. Congratulations. And we shouldn't have been too stunned with, with some of what Phil Davis showed. I mean, especially knocking out Francis Carmone. I think I was, I was pretty stunned by that. Yeah, but, and, and I mean, Emmanuel he's always Newman. had a submission game with him. But <laughs> sure. I think that Phil Davis, I mean, that was just the best commercial yeah. possible for this guy moving forward to fight Liam McGeary, who was victorious in the main event against what I thought was at least a game Tito Ortiz for, for four and a half minutes, being able to take down McGeary. But the thing with McGeary is that guy is not going to panic off his back. Yeah, He's going to wait, and he'll wait 25 minutes if he has to, and catching Tito just with a submission that quickly. And Liam McGeary, I think, is somebody that – more and more people are now taking note of that this is someone that Bellator can really build this light heavyweight division around. I, I agree, but again, if you're if the doors are closed and we're you know figuring things out with Bellator, Phil Davis is our guy. People already know Phil Davis, and if he can continue to do the things that he did in this tournament, especially against Liam McGeary, you kind of are starting to build your own star. And kudos to Tito Ortiz. I think Tito Ortiz. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I know there's talks about retirement because he's uh, 40 years of age, but I think you can give Tito Ortiz interesting, compelling fights, and people are going to tune in. Phil Davis is the man. He is, like, there's no argument. The guy is and has always been a top five light heavyweight. And when he walked in there, strutted his ass in there and said, I'm just going to smash these guys out. doesn't matter which two it is. And that's what he went and did. Good for you, Phil Davis. We're fans. Oh, my gosh. We're all out of time. We didn't even get to Fedor. talk about Fedor Emelianenko, but believe me, there will be lots. Lots of discussion about The Last Emperor, who will be fighting New Year's Eve in Japan, and it's going to air on Spike TV. We've got more Fight News Now Extra. Stay tuned.